My name is Mike Gaben and welcome to my KSP campaign. You may recall a couple of episodes ago that I had sent the Karayan one on its way to rescue four Kerbals that are trapped on Minmus Station. And we'll be revisiting that mission in just a little bit. But first, I've got a D-Class asteroid I need to get to. Now by this point, I'd already gotten my closest approach down to about 10 kilometers, and it's only about five minutes away, but my encounter speed's about one and a quarter kilometers per second. So it's about time for me to start knocking off some of this relative velocity. As you can see, this burn is 777 meters per second, and almost all of that is prograde, which always sort of throws me when I'm setting up these long distant rendezvous maneuvers. Um, because you always think about, you gotta slow yourself down because it's the target that's moving fast, but of course everything is relative, and in this case actually, really relative to the sun, it's the target that's moving faster. The asteroid's coming in behind me, so what I really need to be doing is speeding myself up. So always sort of keep that in mind when you're doing these, uh, these bigger rendezvous that, that, that you're burning in the direction that you really need to, and in this case it is prograde. You also may have noticed that this is year one, day 367. Uh, I'm just going to remind everybody that uh, the Kerbin year does have 426 days, so we still do have a little ways to go before the end of year one. Okay, it looks like I have lost my close encounter indicators, but that's okay. We got ourselves the nav ball, and we can start using you know, the target indicators and the retrograde indicators, just like I'm doing a rendezvous in um, low curb in orbit or something like that. It's just, uh, you're just doing it on a longer scale with bigger velocities, but the idea is still the same, to push that retrograde vector onto the target icon. And after a couple more burns, just like that one, I got to within a few kilometers of the asteroid and was getting ready for my final approach. And we'll just turn the lights on here. You know, I think one of my favorite new features with 1.1 is the ability to tag the menus and lock them down onto the screen. It almost makes me uh, not miss that I don't have general action groups yet. <laughs> I still have to upgrade the VAB sometime. Okay, we'll arm the claw. There we go. And then we can get rid of that menu. Yeah, you know, kind of, you don't really need the general action groups, I think, when you have those menus off to the side. But anyway, uh, right around here, you can see that uh, this asteroid is a little bit bigger than the B-class asteroid you saw me capture just last episode. So uh, I got myself a little bit bigger of a vehicle to deal with it. Okay, uh, yeah, I think we're close enough. Let's Let's lose the main engines for the last time and bring down that relative velocity just a little bit more. There we go, under half a meter per second, little RCS, 0.2 meters per second. Okay, droid KAS-526. We are just about 100 meters away from capturing you, and also step up the speed here a little bit so that this isn't quite so mundane. So what I'm going to do is I'm just using the flight computer and I'm locked in on the target prograde vector which has this thing pointing straight at the center of mass and we'll use RCS to keep our prograde vector centered there as well so we shouldn't have to do any sort of tweaking with lining up our center of thrust with the center of mass of this asteroid. Now one thing is I do have well over 2.2 kilometers per second of delta V on this vehicle but of course, we're about to add a whole lot of mass <laughs> to this vehicle. So one of the things I do have to keep an eye on is what's going to be my delta V after we are connected together. And we're going to be finding that out very, very soon. Boom, there we go. And delta V, oh my gosh, 235 meters per second. Well, that's not a lot, and uh, remember, I do have to get this thing in orbit around Minmus. Yeah, that's what adding on 150 tons of rock is going to do to you. And for a basis of comparison, I had well over 800 meters per second after connecting to my B-class asteroid that's now in orbit around the moon. So this probably is not enough 
delta v to get to minmus, or at least to get a capture around minmus, but I should be able to get a capture with a little help from some arrow breaking around Kerbin. Uh, and then once I'm captured around Kerbin, I can get myself into a stable orbit and I can send up some extra fuel, fuel this thing up and get that show on the road. But the first thing I need to do is orchestrate myself a capture, so I need to put my periapsis down into Kerbin's atmosphere. This is just a little burn, about 17 meters per second here, yeah. There we go, periapsis at 50 kilometers, that should be good enough. We'll tweak this a little bit further once we're in Kerbin's sphere of influence, and we'll we'll bring, we'll just the time of this burn, so it's uh just a few minutes ahead of us. This is definitely a sooner the better type of situation. And then once that was accomplished, it was just a matter of putting the ship onto the maneuver node and uh, putting the execute command into the flight computer. Alrighty. Shouldn't take. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, no, I'm off the node. And now it's chasing the node. Let's cancel this. Cancel, cancel. Oh, that's not working. Let's. Oh, shoot. Oh, just, just shut off the engine. Okay, there. Oh, my goodness. I was definitely a victim of the remote tech wobble there. Now you can see it's wobbling really, really badly. Uh, yeah, remote tech sometimes gets this wobble involved. Just going to try and turn off all of the flight assists here. Come on, there we go. That's off. Okay. And that's all gone. Okay, we'll just let this sort itself out. I think I need to take a look at what the damage is here. And oh dear. Okay, my trajectory is now way out from Kerbin. So obviously that's going to require another correction. I was already talking about the fact that fuel is going to be tight as it is. So a second burn had to be performed to push the periapsis back into Kerbin's atmosphere. Well, actually, it was never in Kerbin's atmosphere in the first place to get it in there like it was supposed to in the first place. And this time I'll do this without the help of the flight computer. The signal delay is only about three quarters of a second, so this is not a big deal. It's not working. Oh, the engine was shut down. That's right. <laughs> wow. That was dramatic. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. Uh, so, like I said, I'm just burning this one manually, taking my time, and not seeming to have any trouble now sticking to my maneuver node, and we'll just burn until... We are reasonably into Kerbin's atmosphere. This will undoubtedly require some further tweaking. I'm also deliberately coming in a bit inclined. This will help me get my inclination right later for Minmus. Yeah, just go a little bit further, forget the maneuver. There we go. Okay, that's good enough. So. Uh, let's see, we will be at Kerbin in about 11 days. Uh, I have 188 meters per second left. Now that doesn't include all the monoprop. I still have quite a lot of monopropellant. Most of my monopropellant is still intact. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. But that encounter will obviously have to be for a future episode. Right now I have a few minor things going on at the KSC. Number one is that my asteroid complex is just about to become fully upgraded. This will mean that I will be able to hire unlimited number of Kerbals. I actually, because of rescuing Kerbals, have exceeded the Kerbal limit for my KSC. So I guess they're all double bunking and stuff like that. But boom, there we go. Now I got all the room that I'll ever need for my Kerbals. And then the next day, I had set Kerbal Alarm Clock to remind me of a contract that I wasn't interested in was about to expire. So uh, that got me into the administrative building to see what was there. And what was there was this contract to collect some science about Minmus. Well, that's going to be easy enough. Boom, there we go. Tamley and Krisnik have just entered Minmus's sphere of influence so now all we have to do is collect ourselves some science let's see the materials base down here move that over and we'll just observe the materials bay there we go oops i can't see how much science i got there according to x science there is 
a little bit of science to collect, but the window's in the way. And Okay, I got 0.4 science, but the contract didn't go green. No, I, he said, yeah, I clearly have to transmit it. Now, there's no science to transmit, but as you'll see in just a little bit, it really doesn't matter. So there we go, transmit, we'll set that off. And Tamley and Chris Nick, of course, are on a rescue mission. There we go, contractor green. Yeah, might as well grab these ones that are for free. And then we'll set up a capture burn and rendezvous and all that stuff with Minmus Station because they got four Kerbals that they're going to need to pick up there. Not to mention Gilly's Debris. That's got to come back with us as well. So uh, we'll be getting to that in just a little bit, but I got one more vehicle back at the KSC. This is the Model K2, which you have seen before. It's just a surface science vehicle for collecting science. And it's got a whole lot of this surface experiment part pack parts on it uh, that are just attached to the vehicle themselves. And what I've done is made an improvement by putting them on this little, these two little decks that you see coming off the side here. But the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get Bartner out to hook things up. Okay, so open up his inventory. Oh, he's got no equipment. Okay, we need his drill. Okay, Carol doesn't have it. Oh, it's back here in this this cargo container back here. So let's open that up and oh yeah, I for, okay, we put the drill in, but I forgot we got this other stuff here. We got this guitar. Yes, a bit of a Chris Hatfield thing I think going on here. Let's equip it. Major Tom. Okay, we're not going to do that. All right, let's, let's get rid of this. And uh, I'll put the guitar back. I mean, these are really just for fun. We are going to need these plugs. Need all those. And I got myself a bit of a boom box. Okay, I think I need to improve my uh, music selection. So we'll put it in his hands there. We'll turn it on. Nice. There we go. Apparently, you can. Uh, put in your own mp3s. You just need to throw them into an appropriate file. I haven't looked into that yet, but uh, it sounds pretty easy. And oh, okay, we fell. Well, I guess the music is appropriate for that sort of thing. Okay, I need a ladder, ladder, ladder. Okay, ladder. I know I moved the ladder, but I forgot where I moved it to. I didn't like where it used to be. Is it around here on the other side? I do not see a ladder. Okay. No, no, no. No ladder. Doesn't help that it's sort of dark. The sun is just set. Oh, there it is. Oh, for goodness sakes. Okay, so well, let's get Bartner back up here. He can get to work and uh, let's let's get rid of the music. I mean, really. Okay, there we go. That's better. <laughs> And what he has to do is he has to use these plugs to hook up each of these experiments to that central station that's at the top of the fuel tank there at the back. And then once those are all hooked up, we are ready to go. And then we're just going to drive around to all the different various biomes and microbiomes in and around the KSC and hopefully collect ourselves a huge amount of science. And one of the things that I'm most excited about is that I now have the GravMax negative gravioli detector. Yes, a new science part finally. Oh, shoot. X science is in the way. And this is the first vehicle to carry this new science part, but of course I will be putting this part on all of my vehicles intended to collect science from now on. So you'll be seeing this part quite a bit more, and hopefully it will allow me to generate quite a bit more science and get myself uh, further on the tech tree. So with all of these science experiments run, it's time for Carol to go out there and start collecting the science so that we can reset them and move on to the next biome. That next biome being just off of the runway here, we just need to go down the hill and then we are in the KSC in general. And again, we'll collect each of these sciences. I mean, it's not a lot from each individual science, but it does add up. And then Carol is going to once again head out and, uh oh, I have no life support for Carol. Oh dear. Yeah, the lab module here does not hold any life support and 
In my shuffling about, I managed to remove the life support and forgot to re-add it. So this mission cannot continue. I'm going to have to recover them. Put this back into the building queue. It won't take long to rebuild and get myself out to Minmus. Yeah, with TAC life support, opening a window and having somebody bring you out some sandwiches just isn't good enough. But uh, a little bit dopey, but uh, no big loss nonetheless. Anyway, uh, you've seen me do these station rendezvous around Minmus into this polar orbit. You've seen me do this before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it. Other than just pointing out that making these inclination changes now with 1.1, now that you can right-click on any kind of a node, any kind of an indicator, an orbital indicator, and have it remain there makes it a lot easier. I don't have to eyeball this inclination change. I can just watch my uh, ascending or descending node uh, inclination percentage, and uh, it may, takes a lot of the guesswork out of this. Thank you, squad. Little RCS, and boom, there we go. Awesome. And we'll just get ourselves over to the docking. Uh, which, by the way, is when I discovered that uh, when I transferred over this science module that came from one of my Kerr users originally, it came along with an external docking camera that I didn't even know was there, but now I've discovered that it is there. So that is pretty exciting. But uh, now that we are docked, we're going to have to think about how we're going to get this Mark II cockpit that came from Gilly Kerman on the surface of Minmus and get this back to Kerbin. So Glafia's out here and uh, we're going to check to see if I happen to have put a docking port, an extra one, away here. And I did not. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't think this through very well. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rip off one of the unused docking ports off of the station. I don't really like to do this, but uh, I don't know what else to do. And as it won't fit in Glafia's inventory, what we'll do is we'll kind of keep attaching it and shuffling it up towards where the Mark II cockpit is. And R, come on, there we go, R and click. There we go. You know, I'm really starting to use R more when using Kerbal inventory system and Kerbal attachment system because it just snaps it to the node. You can see that's just perfectly centered. It's perfect. All right. Now what we got to do is disconnect these struts. Now I know it looks like they're already disconnected, but there you go. You can see me unlinking them. Uh, that's a little bit disconcerting, to be honest, um, that they are linked, but I can't actually see the struts. So what we'll do is we'll unlink everything. There we go. That's everything disconnected. And then I discovered in the process of doing this that my docking port had somehow drifted away and with a little bit more experimentation I discovered that R and clicking actually just drops it. I don't know if that's the intent of KIS but that's the way it works for me and here I have to hold R and H at the same time and that actually attaches it. So there we go that is there and then we'll get Glafia and we'll see if we cannot push this away a bit. Oh, just up there. There we go. Push, push, and nothing. Nothing. You can see here it didn't move at all. There's nothing holding it, yet somehow it remains. So my first thought is why don't I get Glafia aboard this cockpit and see if she cannot, I don't know, shake it loose. Now this is really weird here because if you look you'll see down there at the bottom right she is my only uh, Kerbal on this whole system. I don't see all the Kerbals that are in the station or in the Karayan 1 so it does see this as a separate vehicle yet um, as I you know roll and pitch and do all those kind of things it, it just doesn't shake loose at all. So I thought you know what I need? I need more force. So I got Everybody aboard the Karayan 1. The last person to come aboard being Chrissy, our scientist, uh, who made sure to collect all of that sweet, sweet science that was collected from the surface of Minmus uh, in an earlier episode when we pulled Gilly off of the surface of Minmus. And she even did the dignity of resetting the materials bay for us now that we do have a scientist that's able to do this. And with everybody aboard, I thought I would see if I can use the Karayan 1 to uh, dislodge 
this cockpit. Okay, we are just about there. Boom, there we go. And then we will use, whoop, make sure we're on here. Okay, let's reverse with the RCS. There we go. And you can see this isn't going anywhere. Okay, so plan two, we will go back to the Space Center because these are separate vessels. And then uh, we'll see what happens when we come back. Okay, so back, whoop, wait, we got a notification. Oh, the Columbia is complete. Okay, that's for next episode. Yes, beginning of next episode, we'll see the Columbia once again. That's my space shuttle. But right now, go back to the tracking station, find the Orion, and then hopefully when we get out there, uh, they will be separated. I don't know. Uh, if that doesn't work, I honestly am not sure what it is that I'm going to do. All right, so. Oh! Okay. Well, they're separated. <laughs> Not what I expected, though. Okay, uh, everybody seems okay. Thankfully, I had everybody on the same vessel here. Uh, let's go back to the space station. It is tumbling madly, but that explosion seemed to be in the space station. I do want to check to see if... Make sure nothing's broken. Uh, this isn't coming under immediate control here <laughs> oh uh, wait the only I don't want to turn on the reaction wheels in the lander and in the Kegel 2 because they're all at different angles to each other I only got the reaction wheels in the station itself I think it's coming slowly under some control though to be honest that's not what's really important here I should really just be concentrating on surveying the damage and it's the lander where that explosion seemed to be very close to. That lander there is the Kegel 3. Yeah, yeah. controlling from there is not going to help because I don't have a Kerbal in here. Okay, no, no. The, for, for, let's, let's, let's concentrate on the Kegel here. Yeah, changing the camera doesn't see. Okay, we'll use the camera focus changer mod. We'll just uh, put it on... The Kegel here, put the cursor on the Kegel, and then just press O. There we go. We'll take a look at this. Oh, seems like everything's still there. Now, is it just me? Or does that materials bay seem to be a little bit askew? I do have the crash K R A S H system installed. Uh, I haven't talked really much about it. It kind of came with another mod and it's supposed to model damage from well explosions and crashes and things. Maybe that's at play there. Well, I'll have to check that out later. Right now I'm not going to worry about it. What I really should be worrying about is my Kerbals and getting them back home. So let's get back. Oh wait, the camera focus. There we go. <laughs> I still had it focused on the Kegel there. That's the one disadvantage, the thing you got to keep in mind with that camera focus changer mod. So I just clicked on O, and here we are. <laughs> now we're focused back on the Korean one. Everything here seems okay. Still connected. Oh, well, I got my Mark II cockpit, so that's okay. And I think maybe things would be best served by just getting the heck out of here. So, uh,. We'll just burn on for home. It's not exactly the right time. Our orbit isn't, you know, we are in a polar orbit. I should, there's a, I should be waiting for the orbit to be better aligned with Minmus's orbit around Kerbin, but I don't care. I just want to get these folks back home, get this over with. The grind itself has quite a lot of fuel in it, so I don't need to worry too much about efficiency. Okay, we'll just sort of finish this off. All right, there we go. That's close enough. Uh, let's focus on Kerbin here. Bounce around a little bit. Kerbin, there we go. Scroll on in. See what our trajectory is like. Get rid of the maneuver. Take a look at our periapsis. Okay, we're 84 kilometers, so we're going to want that to be a little bit lower. So we'll just burn prograde just a little bit. Get it into the atmosphere. Boom. There we go. That's good enough. And we will be getting to Kerbin in about five days. 
that's obviously going to have to be for a future episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time. Thank you.